Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? They were looking at Kenmore. And they say that it has some intermittent problems. Sometimes it will start, sometimes it won't. First thing we want to do is look at this door switch. Ideally, you'd want to check your breakers at the power box first. If we look at this one, we can see this one's got been sitting in a bad socket. The dryer uh, plugs get changed quite, changed quite often, but the sockets do not. And you can see that there's a small welding mark right there on the right there in the center, a very small welded mark. It's the same thing right there. A very small spot is touching that. That uh, terminal there could cause that problem. What we're going to do is clean it up a little bit. I got a little steel wool and an emery board. We're going to clean that up. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Okay, we got it hooked up. We got power going to it now. If we push the button, we're going to check something here first. Check this. Now that is a frozen drum. That drum is not going to move. It's not moving. So, either the motor is froze up or something got dropped down this lint chute. It's very likely that the motor is froze up, the bearings are frozen up on it. And here is a typical motor for these. Usually when they're frozen up like that, it means that the bearings have dried out inside. Um, if it is, if it is free, uh, when you push the button, only when, uh, excuse me, if it is locked, only when you push the button, that means the windings are shorted. And so, uh, if you try and move the drum and it doesn't move, then it means that the bearings on the motor or shot, they're shot or dried out. And then I've got a couple of videos that I've already made about these motors and how you can take these uh, bushing caps off and lube them, lube them up inside uh, and free them up. And so uh, ideally, um, that is what I would do. Um, to save money and try and get a little bit of life back into the motor. And, or most people just replace the motors. The motors are about 50 bucks plus your labor. This thing's pretty much gotta come all the way apart to replace the motor. And so, okay, here's the camera. What this does is when you turn it on, you try and turn it on, all it does is hum. It'll just buzz, it won't start. And here's your model number. And if we check this here, it does not move. This motor is frozen up. Um, so basically the bearings on this, or the bushings, are dry inside. We've got the good, good lid switch. And uh, we're going to take it apart and try and lube those bearings. And so first thing we do is take that lint filter out, take these two screws off, pull the back off, the top back and pull the front off and then release the belt and then pull the drum out and then we can access the motor. Okay, so got the top off. Let's lift this out. Be careful with this. Just set that like that. Look at the belt. You see how that belt's on. Just reach in. Pull it back. This one here is going to be a little tricky because the motor don't spin, but.
their belt. Jackpot, and we feel this motor and it's stiff. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to. Oh, there's a pretty old looking diamond back there. Uh, we're gonna have to take this off. Oh, did you know what? Nickels. Good nickels are uh, actually worth seven cents. There's seven cents worth of nickel in a nickel. So I might want to be saving the gold nickel. Um, so yeah, we need to take these clips off. This one. And this one, actually, we'll take this back one off first so we can grab that blower in the back of it. And then we'll stick a couple of wrenches on this and pull it off. And then we'll pull the bearing caps loose and then lube underneath. And we gotta clean out this lint in here as well. Okay, so this one has the dreaded uh, locked up uh, blower wheel. So basically, the blower wheel will not come off does not come off. So what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and lube all, uh, all the bushings on the motor in place. So if you have a vice grip on this end and one on this end, and you go this way, that's uh, unscrewing the blower in back of this housing. Um, and I've tried pretty hard. Ideally, you'd want to heat it up a little bit, but we're not going to do that. If you look at it, I grab that not pretty hard and it just doesn't want to come loose and we do, do have a little bit of play in the motor now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to, first of all i'm going to turn it on its back pull this bearing cap off let it weep in and then i'll turn it on its front let's take this door off turn it on its front and let the uh pull this back bearing cap off here and let it weep in from the back so we pull the front bearing cap off Lay it down, let it weep in, work it around, and then turn it on its face and let the oil weep in from this end. We could also put some on this end when we lay it on its back to weep in into that bushing. You can see it's pretty stiff right now. And uh, it will uh, loosen up a little bit as soon as I get some oil in there. Yeah, that seems like pretty tight. Okay. And then remember to clean out the lint. Okay, one thing I did notice is this roller is bad. We're gonna try and fix it. So, the inside, this is not supposed to spin like this. It's supposed to be stationary. That's what these clamps are for, to clamp it into that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press, I'm gonna put some, uh, put some goop, uh, oil on here, not oil, uh, some glue. Uh, group glue or E6000 uh, press these clamps together and that way this, this uh, will be uh, solid and the thing is is that uh, this is not solid basically it's rubbing against metal against the, whatever, the nylon or the plastic so it'll eventually wear out quicker than normal um, it's supposed to be solid here so that it only rubs it only turns on the shaft and this outer bushing okay I uh, used the 6000 to glue that center wheel back together. And you can see that the whole thing turns now. The whole thing turns. Like this one is supposed to be, see? The whole thing turns. This part here is not set, but that center pushing is, uh, doesn't, is all connected to the wheel, basically. And I've got the steering cap loose. And I sprayed a mixture of triflow and motor oil in here, and now it's it's fairly free. What we can do is try and start it, and then let let it run through there, and then maybe do it again, so the oil gets out all inside there. And we've got some coins that dropped. They got back in the chute. Something fell down the chute. It's typical. This is the dryer with the vent chute on the top of it, and things fall down this vent chute and then get caught in a blower housing. 
This motor here is pretty loose right now. I can turn it by hand. Originally, I couldn't do that. Um, you also want to check for up and down slop on the shaft. And so this one doesn't have any up and down shaft, uh, shaft slop. So it should be good. Uh, I'm going to work this in a little bit more and then give it a try. Sometimes if you wiggle this and you hear something in there crunching around, you got something inside. Okay, there it is. It's working now before it wouldn't even start. You have to have that door switch hooked up in order to try it. There's a little disclaimer for you. This video is for informational purposes only. Because working on dryers can be hazardous. Okay, if we seal this, the oil is worked in pretty good, so it's it's back to normal at this point. Um, I'm gonna clean this lint out and I'm gonna give it one more shot back here, I think. And we should be good. Put it all back together. And we're ready to rip. That's your tip for today. Uh, if you're interested, I teach a course on how to make money in the appliance repair business.